welcome to another review. Um, just a little backstory first. Um, I have a few, I have about four or five new series I wanted to get through lately. And um, I started with the October Day series by Shannon McGuire. And the first book was Rose Marianne Rue. <coughs> and um, I read about the first hundred pages and I was just not getting into it. It was just... It just didn't grab my attention and the beginning of the book was really weird like this person who had a, a fiance and a daughter um got turned into a fish for 14 years and then got out of the pond and then she couldn't find her family i don't know it was just, it just wasn't i just wasn't into it so i stopped reading it and then i read cut by patricia mccallister which was very good it was short but it was very good and then I decided to try another series, so I then decided to try the Half Light City series by M.J. Scott. And there are two books in this series so far, and there will be a third one, but I'm not sure when that's out yet. And um, I loved it, I loved this series, I thought it was brilliant, I was so happy. Like the minute I read the first chapter, I knew I was into it straight away. Um, the only disappointing thing about this for me was, like in the first book, there is narrated from two people, you know, the main guy and the main girl, um, Simon and, and Lily. And then I went into the second book, and I was so excited there was a second book, and I started reading it, and then I was like, it was from this girl called Holly's point of view, and I was like, who's Holly? And then I was like, oh no, what's from someone else's point of view? And a different guy and a girl, but then, once I read a bit more, I was happy that it was actually a person from the first book, who was the, the the narrator, well one of the narrators, and as well characters from the first book were in the second book. So it was a little more like say like of the world series by Kelly Armstrong rather than like one you know, of those romance series where there's just a different couple in every book, like which a lot of authors do. Um so it kind of lessened the blow a bit. But this series there are kind of four main species or types of people. So we have humans and the humans can be different types of mages so they can have powers. And then we have vampires or the bloods and then we have the beasts which are kind of like shape shifters or kind of like giant werewolves. We have the fae, so the fairies. And then we have half fae as well, we're the half human, half fae. And two of our main characters are half human, half fae. And the main character from the first book, she is a wraith so she can turn into kind of shadows. She can make herself disappear and travel through shadows um, at night. And she is this, she's practically the slave to this vampire her whole life since she was a child. And she is his main assassin. And she is sent to kill this sun mage, Simon. And he catches her and he stops her. But then he wants to help her. And it's just kind of the story throughout um her trying to get away from the vampires and helping and trusting and in the second book there's a similar kind of trusting and working relationship uh, i really enjoy these books they were so um just captivating and enjoyable the whole way through and um i think they also do a great job not only with the world building but with the characters really kind of complex characters you want to get to know and like and um I just thought it was great, a real pleasure. And um, I do think I'd prefer the first book to the second book, mostly because, well, one, I got into the characters in the first book, so I kind of missed them a little bit from the second when they weren't around. And I do think I preferred the story a little bit more in the first and the second. The second is still really good too. I read a lot of reviews and a lot of people actually prefer the second book. But I mean, to, to each their own, but I still think they're both quite good. And, um,. Such nice relationships and dynamics in there. And I can't wait for the third one. Um, I'm not sure who's going to narrate the third one. I have a couple of theories. But um, we'll see. It's kind of, it does a cute thing as well. Um, in the first book, you know, since it's narrated from two people, every time you see a, a moon, a half moon, before a, a section, you know it's from the main girl's point of view because, you know, she's a wraith and she's in the shadows at night. And every time there's a picture of the sun before the a section, you know it's from the main guy's point of view because he's a sun mage. So I thought that was a cute thing. It took me a while to figure that out actually. 
Uh, maybe even people got confused by that because in the second book she just uses their names are the same. Um, anyway, so yeah, I definitely recommend it. I thought it was great and um, easy to read too and interesting and um, yeah, good, good find. Okay, so now I'm going to do a spoiler review and if you haven't read these books before, I suggest you switch off now. Okay, so instantly I love Lily and Simon's relationship. Isn't he such a sweetheart? Like, this person sent to kill him and he's just instantly feels his obligation to help her and protect her and get her out of this trouble. And he does instantly go, oh, she's awful, she's an assassin. He goes for the, the truth of the situation, which means that she's a slave and she used to do all these horrible things against her will. And he was just lovely for that. And you really feel for Lily as well. Um, yeah, nice complex character. I didn't really like it a little bit towards the end where um, Simon was getting quite hard on her. I remember he didn't care that she ran away and he didn't want anything to do with her. And only found out she was addicted to blood. Um, which was kind of unfair on her, like she didn't want that. But then in the end, thankfully, he admitted he loved her and they were together. It was all lovely and happy. It was a happy ending, but it wasn't like a cheesy happy ending. I kind of liked it. A similar thing happens in the second book, you know, between Holly and Guy. You know, he finds out that she's under a guess and that she was spying on Simon. He instantly kind of hate, hate, his love turns to hate very quickly. And so I do think that was a little bit repetitive of the first book. Maybe that's kind of like a running theme in the books, I don't know. Um, but yeah, he's kind of similar to his brother in that way. But then, um, you know, he turns around and he figures out that she really did like him and wasn't all a lie. Um, I do think I prefer the ending to the first book, the ending to the second book. While again, the author went for like a happy ending. It was a bit more abrupt and didn't play out, play out as nicely, I felt. And obviously I'm kind of biased because I do prefer Simon and Lily. It'll be interesting, interesting to see where the third book goes. Here are my theories. Either we, we go back to Simon and Lily, which is my number one hope. Or it'll be, I have a feeling, Saskia, the sister. And maybe Liam, the other knight. Um, so we'll stay in the same world and the same group of characters. But we'll have a different main couple. And... I'm not crazy about that in series, just because it's just like an excuse for a new love romance in each book when I prefer to see the same one develop and change and everything. Yeah, so it took me a while to realise what type of world it was human-wise, but um, yeah, I thought it was really interesting and I loved the relationships in it. And Guy and Lily even had a really nice relationship by the second book, and he was quite protective of her. I do think the author could have worked a little bit more to make the second book storyline more believable. Like, it was quite flimsy. Like, Guy went to a lot of trouble to not let Lily get involved. When it just would have been so much simpler for the characters, for the author, if he let Lily get involved. It's like he went to a bit too much trouble. Like, he got rid of his tattoos. He was, like, disowned from the, the, the knights. Um, and then, as well, all that was just to get a bit of information about the beasts. I don't know, it felt like... Too much was put into getting too little, like just a bit of information. I know in the end they got a lot more out of it than they planned, but I understood what, what Lily's role was to get her family back, but Guy's role, it's like he wasn't getting much benefits from all the things he lost. I don't know, it just, the author could have put a bit more thought and conviction to the storyline. But besides that, I do think it was um, a great series so far, and I'm really looking forward to what the author does next. It would be amazing if it went back to Simon and Lily, but um, I'm not sure it will. But anyway, thank you very much for watching my review today, and I hope you check out the series. And if you have read it before, let me know what you think. And um, happy reading!